to begin a series, and I'm just going to do this once a month. We'll get back to uh, Baptist history most of the weeks uh, in a month, but um, I, I wanted to call it um, God's Hand in American History, or maybe Miracles in, uh, in American History, and, and um, I, I was thinking this morning, you know, um, we live in an in a interesting time, and uh, you've heard the term cancel culture. And the, and the cancel culture, at least as I understand it, is that, um, of course, I would say it's, uh, I think everybody knows this, it's, it's based on total ignorance, especially hist historical ignorance. But uh, uh, if someone doesn't agree with me, I'm going to make them a non-person. I'm going to erase every memory of them. Uh, I'm going to tear down their statues. I'm going to, uh, maybe if they're current, I'm going to try to ruin their business or ruin their life. Um, and and um, this is not new. This, is, uh, this has actually been very uh, common uh, in, in world history. Uh, whenever socialism or communism comes into a country, they, they'll burn books that they don't agree with. That's what's happening today. We're burning books. Uh, Dr. Seuss has been burned. Uh, you know, uh, as trivial as that is, isn't that something? Um, and, um, and we'll tear down statues of people that we don't believe, that don't believe like us. Um, um, I always think of poor Abraham Lincoln, man, the guy can't get a break. He, uh, he, he, he uh, frees the slaves, he gets killed for doing it, and they're still tearing his statue down. So, I don't know, uh, feel bad for him. But, um, but anyway, I say that, that it, the thought occurred to me that one of the reasons we have this culture happening today is because American history hasn't been taught, uh, at least correctly, in the public schools. So millions and millions of people graduating, having no idea about the founding of our country and, and the miracles that God uh, provided for our country. And uh, so I thought, well, let, let's, uh, let's try to undo some of that. And maybe, and maybe some here uh, don't know some of these things. And I, um, I, I thought I'd take just a, a week a month and just talk about some amazing things that have happened in American history. Some will be about Baptists, some won't be about Baptists. Uh, some will be about people that aren't religious at all. Um, and, um, and just talk about those and maybe um, really help us to see this country we live in and the, and the exceptional nature of this country. Um, you know that millions of people in our country, and, and I think that you know, we would be among them, uh, think, there, think there's something very special, something exceptional about the United States. In fact, millions of people across the world um, believe the same thing, and they want it to be true. I hope you see what I said there. They, they hope it's true, uh, what, what we believe about American exceptionalism. And um, this belief that there's something special about America um, is um, almost an entirely an American trait. Other countries don't necessarily, necessarily think the same thing about about their own country. We sing songs um, about pride uh, welling up in our hearts as we, as we see the flag fl uh, fly and, and, um, and we, we uh, maybe wipe a tear away in, in a Star Spangled Banner. Um, that's, that's unusual, really, in the world, and certainly in world, world history. Um, and I will say that many people hate us for that feeling and the way we think about ourselves. Uh, it offends them that we might be different. Um, you know, uh, right after the country was founded, there was a French philosopher, Alexis de Tocqueville, and he wrote extensively about America and uh, came over here and traveled America and, and wrote about it, it being different and why it was different. Um, but maybe that, that, um, that thinking was described almost 200 years earlier by the man who founded uh, Massachusetts, the Massachusetts Bay Colony. And uh, we might talk a little bit about that, and we have talked about that. But, um, and uh, uh, Governor John Winthrop, he, he described the colony as a city on a hill. And um, Ronald Reagan reintroduced that idea with the phrase that inspired us all, a shining city on a hill, and how special that speech was um, as he described America. So there are, there are many ideas that people might think uh, looking, looking at America from the outside, and maybe, maybe we would look at this and say the same thing sometimes about why we're exceptional. You know, we have a constitution that's the highest law in the land. Um, it emphasizes individual freedoms and rights. Um, it protects the citizens from the government. 
hopefully. Um, the adherence to, another thought would be the adherence to private morality. Um, how that, uh, somebody said there can be no public virtue without private morality. Uh, the idea that is, is uh, not unique to us today, but is, is very unique in the last, uh, in, in the history of the world, the idea that all citizens are created equal and everybody is equal under the law. There, of course, are some geographical and, and uh, uh, things that make America uh, exceptional, uh, natural resources uh, that make our country uh, unique. But these are great, and these are good things, but this is not what I mean by exceptionalism. When you hear that phrase, um, you, you typically we're not referring to, to those, those things. But the idea is, and what I'm referring to, is that there, there is a supernatural explanation for America, or the idea that God intended our nation to be a, a beacon on a hill. And uh, so the question is, does God consider the United States an exceptional place? Um, maybe a place with a specific purpose or, or plan. Um, is it possible that God has ordained and defended the United States at points? Um, there are critical points in our history, uh, some of these we'll talk about, that the, the things were so stacked against the United States that we, we very easily could have failed and maybe should have failed, humanly speaking. Um, and the question is, did God intervene? Did God intervene to save us, to save, to save the nation? Did he perhaps um, intend for us to be an example of liberty and some of these other virtues to the rest of the world? Um, I would say that the evidence is a bit overwhelming, and uh, I want to take this time every month and, and talk about some key points where God did provide miracles and um, did protect us from failing and, and really um, assured, assured, us that, assured the nation that it would, would survive. In uh, the summer of 1787, uh, there was a constitutional convention called to create um, our, the constitution that we have now. And um, the delegates there were struggling with some almost insurmountable problems uh, that they had to deal with. And Benjamin Franklin stood to his feet and he said this, of all people, Benjamin Franklin, he said, in the beginning of, this con in the, of, the, in the beginning of the contest with Great Britain, when we were sensible of danger, we had daily prayer in this room for divine protection. Our prayers, sir, were heard and were graciously answered. I have lived a long time, and the longer I live, the more convincing proof I see of this truth that God governs the affairs of men. Um, what, a, what a great testimony from, from a man at the Constitutional Convention. Um, I will talk about uh, some men and women, um, maybe that I'll uphold, that are hated today. Um, I, I, I'm aware of that. Um, um, I will say that uh, men are just that. They're, they're men. They're imperfect. They have flaws. Sometimes, as I said, they're not even re religious. But uh, I think that it's good for us to review some of these, some of these people and, um, and not just jump on whatever the current, current bandwagon is politically. So we're going to look at a couple different things. And we're not going to start today. We're going to start uh, next time. But uh, we're going to look at the, the, uh, really the, uh, the discovery of our country. Um, talk about that in just a minute, but uh, we're going to look at, of course, the founder, the, the founding father, the, maybe the greatest founding father of our country, George Washington, and uh, some things that happened in his life that you just can't explain away as chance, uh, God's miracles that happened in his, in his life. Um, there are some things in that war of independence from Britain that um, can only be explained uh, by the, a miracle of God. And we'll talk about even some things in World War II. Uh, I, I think of there's an assassination attempt on a president um, that is miraculously uh, stopped by, by God. Um, and so uh, next time we're going to start with a man that is, uh, uh, really uh, generates many different kinds of emotions in people. Um, on one hand, he has a national holiday that we celebrate. And on the other hand, his statue is being torn down as we speak, uh, especially in the last year or two. Uh, but he was a man of vision and unbelievable bravery. And according to his writings, he believed that his success was a result of heavenly guidance. And this is probably why he was so persistent in what he did. So the first miracle we're going to look at next time is the discovery of America 
and the very unlikely man that God used to do that.